Welcome to Buy, Hold, Sell, brought to you by Livewire Markets. My name is Matthew Kidman, and we are going back to look at some of the stocks that performed well during the earnings reporting season. And to discuss this, we've got Michelle Lopez from Aberdeen Standard and Simon Shields from Monash. Simon, I looked at Webjet's result. There were arrows everywhere going down, down, down. But there was a lot of cash on the balance sheet. Looks like it's going to survive. Buy, hold or sell. Well, it was actually a beat versus expectations. That's a buy for us. Um, the cash burn was moderating. Uh, everyone liked the optimistic outlook, even though there wasn't guidance given. And what we do know about these travel stocks, and generally analysts when you're coming out of uh, a travel downturn, is they generally underestimate that consumer response. And so the market is starting to anticipate that, still not fully doing it. We think it's a buy. It's come a long way, but I've got to say, I booked my first trip last week. Webjet, buy, hold or sell. Uh, it's a hold at these levels, and I'll tell you why. Um, I agree, this is a solid business actually, and it is leveraged the reopening of, of travel, and particularly the leisure, cent the leisure part of the market, which is where we're more optimistic on. Um, however, for us, if you take into account the highly dilutive equity raise that they did last year, which is 150% of shares on issue, um, and you put that into, and also could be a further 100 million euro convertible bonds that, um, convertible notes that they did in June. Uh, what you've got now is a share price that's equivalent to say $5 pre-COVID. Um, so that recovery has been factored in. And in fact, there's very little risk being attributed to um, the recovery pathway, which we're, it, it's not a given. It, there is still a lot of uncertainty about how this plays out. Um, so from a valuation perspective, it's a hold. Okay, we're all training ourselves how to socialise again. And when we get out there, we've got to look good. La Visa, accessories, buy, hold, uh, or sell. La Visa, look, La Visa had a commendable result, I must, I must admit. Um, it's a hold, first and foremost, I must say. Um, Two things. So the business itself has been uncharacteristically resilient for what is a fashion retailer. Uh, we have not invested. There's too much execution risk from a global rollout strategy. Um, and presently, the valuation looks very full. So a, a, a commendable result, strong business model with good margins for, for a retailer, but it's in the price. So it's a hold. It really ripped, didn't it, Simon? Buy, hold or sell? It's a buy for us. Yes, it really ripped. It's a stock we've been across for a long time. And I agree with Michelle to the extent that the rollout's very important, but we're very confident in the rollout. When you look at the penetration in Australia, look at the um, lack of penetration, some of the other markets where it's growing very quickly, and the fact that it can get its hand on quite a large store network very quickly, like it did in Europe, uh, these opportunities do come up from time to time. Every time it opens up a new store, the payback is about a year or less. So it's, it's a tremendous business. Um, management's first class, excellent execution. And when we do our DCF, we get lots and lots of upside. Okay. Treasury wines, knock for six with the Chinese tariffs. Should we be relaxing out on the Grange or throwing it in the bin? Buy, hold or sell? <laughs> That's a sell for me. It was a positive surprise on the result because they were able to redirect some of the sales that would have otherwise gone to China to elsewhere. But our big problem with this stock is the trend in the United States towards lower price wines. And um, that's our biggest concern over the business. That's why we got out of it originally. And for us, it's still a sell. Michelle, Treasury Wines, some great products. China doesn't want it anymore. Buy, yeah, hold or sell. You know, I'm, I'm agreeing with uh, Simon on this one. It's a sell. It's a sell. I think the market is really underestimating what this China situation means for them and the earnings gap um, that it is, is now coming their way. They've got to redirect a lot of wine to other regions and the US is one of those regions that they're going to do this um, and that's not where the market is at. Um, so I think there's, it's, that risk is not properly priced in um, and there's, there's you know, management change that they're working through. There's been, it's not just uh, the new CEO uh, who's been, it's the whole level of management below him as well. Um, so there's, there's very strong execution risk on that one. Okay. So, now, Michelle, is there something that didn't get any love from the market that was overlooked? We need to take out our pens here because you're going to tell us something that we've missed. Yeah, look, I, uh, the one that stands out for me is, is Nanasonics. Um, Nanasonics is, you know, I clearly saw something in, in that result that the market did not because it was off 8% on the day but has since recovered. Um, so Nanasonics, the core product that they have is high-level disinfectant 
disruption in uh, hospitals and clinics around the world. They, they, have, they dominate um, Australia and New Zealand. They've got 50% US share and they're about to ramp up in EMEA. And to give you context, the, the amount of units that they sold in the second quarter of 21 was higher than the amount that they sold in third quarter of, of 20, which was pre-COVID. That means two things. First, it's a real recovery. Um, especially given limited access to hospitals, but but secondly, it poses really um, poses them well for for the consumable part of the business and consumables is their recurring um, their recurring earnings and that's seventy percent of the business. Um, and then you know balance sheet rock solid, ninety million of, of cash on the balance sheet. Um, they've got a second product coming out to the market, which has got an addressable market as large as their first. Um, so it's sold off, but I think what's more interesting is it's off 30% since the beginning of the year. And for me, what I'm seeing now is that second product, which is still relatively unknown, isn't factored in now as much as it was. So it was quite an interesting opportunity to, to buy. Okay, Simon, you've got to be beat that. Something better than nanosonics that all of us haven't worked out yet. People infrastructure. So People Infrastructure is a workforce management company. It's got its own platform, so there's a bit of digitisation there. It white labels for others. And it's in some sectors that are pretty hot, if you like. So home care for the aged or, or people through the NDIS, um, as well as resources, as well as some tech. Um, now, it had a result and beat expectations, but what the market didn't like was that the CEO was leaving. We can look through that. You only just started. Exactly. He had only just started as the CEO, but he'd been at the company for like 17 years. Um, didn't really suit him being the CEO. So off he went and somebody else will come in. We think that, you know, even as late as a couple of days ago, the aged care announcements for the government on how they're going to be going more emphasis towards in-home care for the aged, that's going to be pushing things in the right direction for PPE. On 13 times, two-year PE with double-digit growth, it's a bargain. Well, Simon did it last year. He disagreed with everything the other guests said. He's done it again. There's no lunch for you too. Questions without notice, and we're going to get them from the readers this time. I'm going to start with you, Simon. You're on a roll. Robert writes into us and says, Service Stream didn't have a bad result, but the market just punished it. Well, Give us an explanation. Well, Robert, Service Stream did have a bad result, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> it, it downgraded last year. It disappointed in this result. Um, you might call it a solid result, but it's clearly losing market share. You can see in the margin and in the uh, revenue, um, you know, the NBN share is losing. It seems to be losing share elsewhere. For professional managers, uh, what we saw was that the management's getting harder to talk to. That's always a sign when they're pulling their heads in, they've got something that they're you know, I just don't want to talk to you about. And you've got to read between the lines, we're out of it and we don't think we're going to be going back in until we can see this company turning around. Okay, another question without notice and we'll go to you, Michelle. Simone has written, what company has been bid up strongly since the result but probably been bought up too much? So for me, I think Westpac's one of those stocks that have run probably a bit too hard and, and again, taking a, a longer term view the banks in general, yes, they're in a sweet spot at the moment, um, but the growth is structurally challenged. One of the clear things that came out of reporting season um, was the release of provisions that many of the banks had, had put through earlier um, uh, as a response to COVID. And, and Westpac was one of the most aggressive banks to release um, that provision. They released something like 500 million, which was half of the economic overlay, if you call it. That was the quarterly result that came through. So there was actually no detail um, as to the underlying business itself and, and the operating conditions, whether they have one share, whether, um, you know, what's going on um, from an earnings perspective. That's my one, Simone, good question. If you enjoyed that episode, please subscribe to our Livewire YouTube channel.